For over a decade, the Su-57 Felon has attracted as much curiosity as controversy. Presented as the flagship of Russian aviation, this aircraft is often compared to the F-22 Raptor or the Chinese J-20. But what does it truly represent? Is it a revolutionary machine or a half-hearted military program, a victim of its time and economic constraints? To understand the Su-57, we must first look back. Its story begins long before the prototype appeared in the final years of the Soviet Union. As early as 1979, Moscow dreamed of a fifth-generation fighter capable of rivaling future American projects. The program, called MFI, Multifunctional Frontline Fighter, was intended to replace the MiG-29 Fulcrum and Su-27 Flanker, two legends that had defined Soviet air power. Two competing concepts emerged, the MiG-1.44 and the Sukhoi S-32, later renamed the Su-47 Burkut, recognizable by its forward-swept wings. The ambitions were immense to combine the maneuverability of a flanker with the stealth and versatility that the aviation of tomorrow promised. But the collapse of the USSR in 1991 ended these dreams. Russia in the 1990s no longer had the financial means or political stability to develop such a project. It was not until 2001 that the idea resurfaced. The Ministry of Defense relaunched a program called PAKFA, Perspectivny Aviazioni Complex Frontovoy Aviation, literally, Perspective Airborne Complex of Frontline Aviation. Once again, MiG and Sukhoi were in competition. MiG proposed a relatively affordable aircraft, while Sukhoi offered a costlier but technologically superior fighter. Sukhoi was chosen. Despite the economic difficulties of the time, the design bureau had remained active thanks to the massive export of its flanker variants, notably to India and China. By 2004, the concept was finalized. It was then called the T-50. At first glance, it resembled the American F-22, but with a clear ambition to offer comparable, even superior performance at a much lower cost. In 2010, the first prototype took flight, a symbolic step even though the path to operational service would prove long and fraught with obstacles. The following years were marked by a succession of prototypes and demonstrators. Ten units in total were produced before the aircraft was officially renamed Su-57 in 2017. Its NATO designation, Felon, reflects a certain Western caution. But behind this label lies an aircraft that combines tradition and innovation. On paper, the Su-57 has all the characteristics of a fifth-generation fighter. Stealth, supercruise, multiple integrated sensors, and a high degree of maneuverability. Its reported top speed reaches Mach 2, while it can maintain supercruise at Mach 1.3, an advantage the F-35 does not have. Its range is also impressive, up to 3,500 kilometers on internal fuel and over 4,500 kilometers with external tanks. These figures place it well above its American rival, the F-22, which is limited to about 1,000 kilometers on internal fuel. But the most intriguing aspect of the Su-57's design is its sensors. The aircraft carries a Belka AESA radar capable of tracking 60 targets and engaging 16 simultaneously. It is supported by additional X-band radars mounted on the fuselage sides, offering unprecedented lateral coverage. In practical terms, this allows the pilot to maintain radar lock even during evasive maneuvers, a valuable tactical ability against enemy missiles. Advanced electro-optical systems add to this, infrared detectors, ultraviolet sensors to detect missile launches, and a DIRCM system using lasers to blind enemy seekers. On paper, this is a fighter designed to survive in a threat-saturated environment, where stealth alone is no longer enough. However, stealth remains a topic of debate. Unlike the Americans, who use extremely sophisticated but costly radar-absorbing coatings, Russia relies on a more pragmatic approach. The Su-57's airframe is built from composite materials and integrated absorbent fibers intended to reduce radar signature while keeping costs at an acceptable level. Western experts, however, estimate that its stealth rating remains below that of the F-22 or the Chinese J-20. Adding to this is another crucial question, the engines. 
The first Su-57 units still use AL-41F1 turbines, derived from those of the Su-35. Eventually, the aircraft is expected to receive the new Saturn Isdilia 30 engines, designed to improve thrust, reduce fuel consumption, and lower maintenance costs. However, their development has proven slower than anticipated, delaying the aircraft's full operational entry into service. Despite this, the Su-57 remains a formidable aircraft in terms of maneuverability. As an heir to the flanker tradition, it retains impressive agility at low speeds while incorporating new features like levcons, movable surfaces on the wing's leading edge, which optimize airflow during tight maneuvers. This combination of agility and partial stealth places it in a hybrid category between the Western philosophy focused on invisibility and the Russian approach favoring maneuverability. Operationally, the situation is more nuanced. The Su-57 officially entered service in December 2020, but in very small numbers. Initially, Russia aimed to deploy 200 units by 2028. Today, estimates suggest around 70 to 80 aircraft over the decade. A modest production, a direct consequence of economic constraints and international sanctions. Despite this limited deployment, the aircraft has been spotted in Ukrainian airspace since 2022. Russian authorities claim it has conducted strike missions and suppression of enemy air defenses, taking advantage of its stealth. The lack of independent verification makes these claims difficult to confirm, but they at least suggest that the Su-57 is now operational in certain roles. Its future remains uncertain. Some analysts believe it is destined to remain an elite fighter in small numbers, an American equivalent of the F-22, too expensive and too rare to be mass-produced. Others see it as a development platform for future fighter generations, including the lighter, export-oriented Su-75 Checkmate. Ultimately, the Su-57 Felon embodies the paradoxes of contemporary Russia, 